Now we're going to learn how to test a claim about a standard deviation. In this problem, uh, we're studying the weights of pennies. Manufacturers of vending machines need to know the weight of a coin to correctly count the change as customers insert coins into the slot. Not all legitimate coins weigh the same, so manufacturers need to adjust the machine to accept coins within a range of weights. They determine the range of weights to accept by using the standard deviation of the weights. If a coin that's inserted has an unusual weight, it's a little too light or too heavy, then it's going to be rejected. So let's assume that we have a sample of 25 pennies from a manufacturer before 1983, and they have a standard deviation of 0 0.0291 grams. We want to test the claim that the weight of these pennies have a standard deviation greater than 0 0.023 and we'll do that using a, a 0 0.01 significance level. So we'll use the same 10 steps that we have when we test a claim about a proportion or a mean. And we start out by identifying the parameter and verifying the requirements. Well we're studying a sigma, a standard deviation, and that's the standard deviation of the weight of the pennies and the units would be in grams. Now, before we go any further, we always just pause and reflect to make sure that we've satisfied the requirements. In this case, we know we'll be using a chi-square distribution. When you study a standard deviation, testing a claim about it, or a confidence interval for that matter, you end up using the chi-square distribution. It has a very firm requirement that you need to be sampling from a normal distribution. The sample size doesn't help out here. Uh, you, <clears throat> you need to be starting with a normal distribution to begin with. Well, in this case, we're dealing with the weights of pennies, and it's pretty <clears throat> reasonable to assume that they are normally distributed. Things like weights and heights and different measurements that we come across typically are normally distributed, so it's re reasonable to go ahead and proceed and use this technique. The second step, we need to formulate the hypothesis. The null hypothesis always starts out with equality, and the parameter we're studying is sigma, so it'll be sigma equals 0 0.023 grams. That's the null. The claim is sigma, the standard deviation, is actually greater than 0 0.023 grams, and we'll mark that as the claim. That'll help us later on in step 10 when we go to construct our sentence that summarizes the study. Since I have a greater than in my alternate, the <coughs> inequality sign is pointing to the right, that means I have a right tail test. All right, in the next step, we make sure we have a significance level. We do. It's a 1% or alpha equal 0 0.01. And reading the paragraph, we see there's some other important information there. The sample size, N, is 25. 0 0.0291 is an S. It's a sample standard deviation. And since we're using a chi-squared probability distribution, we'll need a degrees of freedom, but that's easy to calculate. That's just n minus 1 or 24. The next step would be to get the critical value. This would be a critical value for a chi-squared distribution with 24 degrees of freedom and 0.01 probability to the right. You have to use table A4 to do that. Your TI calculators doesn't have a function to get you chi-square critical values. Using the table, you'll see that our critical value out in the right tail is 42.98. So to put that in our graph, we would show a right tail test. The critical or rejection region always starts at the critical value. And the critical value here is 42.98 and the total area in the critical or rejection region is always equal to the significance level, or alpha, in this case 0.01. So that's our setup, that's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and go to the next step where we calculate a test statistic and a p-value. For the chi-squared distribution, we don't have a function on our TI calculators that gives us the test statistic and p-value. We have to rely on the formulas. They're on your formula sheet, that's the formula we use. Looking at that, we see we've got all the information we need. N minus 1 is just the degrees of freedom. 
s squared is the square of the sample standard deviation and sigma squared that comes from the null hypothesis putting substituting those numbers into the formula we get a test statistic of 38.42 alright now how do we find a p-value a p-value is a probability it's a probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one we just found this is a right tail test so everything is going to the right so that means when I calculate probability for my p-value I'm also going to the right I like to know the probability of getting a chi-squared variable with 24 degrees of freedom greater than 38.42 now we do have a TI calculator function that will get us that for us it's chi-squared CDF left right well the left we're starting at 38.42 E99 we're going all the way out in the tail and 24 is the degrees of freedom and you'll get an answer of 0 0.0314 now let's update our graph with this information. The test statistic 38.14 is to the left of the critical value. So the test statistic is not in the critical region. The p-value is all the area to the right of the test statistic. And we saw that that is 0 0.0314. Now let's come to our conclusions. Oh, well first we'll do calculate a confidence interval. Now, remember, when a one, you have one tail test, the corresponding confidence level is 1 minus 2 alpha. Alpha is 0 0.01, so actually we're calculating a 98% confidence interval using the formulas that we had in Chapter 7 and substituting in. You'd see that those, those are the values, and we'd arrive at a confidence interval of 0 0.0217 and 2.0433. And remember to take the square root at the end here. This, we have the square root there because we're dealing with a sigma, not a sigma squared. We had summarized our finding by saying I'm 98% confident that the standard deviation of the weight of pre-1983 pennies is between 0 0.0217 and 0 0.0433 grams. All right, well, now we've done all the work. Let's come to the conclusion, and we will do it in three different ways. In the traditional method, the traditional method, I use the test statistic and I compare it with the critical value. In this case, I would fail to reject the null because the test statistic is not in the rejection region. The test statistic 38.42 is to the left of the critical value, 42.98, and this is a right tail test. So that means I'm outside the rejection region, I would fail to reject. In the p-value method, I compare two probabilities. I compare the, prob, uh, the p-value with the significance level. The little poem goes, if the p is low, the null must go. If the p is high, the null will fly. The p-value is 0 0.03. It's greater than the significance level, 0 0.01. So that means I would fail to reject the null. The p is high, the null will fly. Now finally, let's do it yet another way, the confidence interval. My confidence interval contains the, the value in the null, 0 0.023, so I would fail to reject the null because my 98% confidence interval does contain 0 0.023. So I put the uh, blue arrow down here pointing to the null hypothesis because that's what our data supports. And now in putting uh, together the final sentence, I see that the claim is the alternate, but my data supports the null, so my final statement would be the data does not support the claim that the standard deviation of the weight of pre-1983 pennies is greater than 0 0.023 grams.